claim. Oh, we want to see the 500 each of the table. Everybody. Each. Okay. All right. Say, it's an agreement. I'm not that
Welcome, Kuzoheri. Thank you very much, Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Henry. Messiah, good evening. Good evening, Good evening, Well done. And you know, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. And Jenna Nimot Muli, welcome, ma. Thank you for being there right on time. Henry. Uh, Henry, please kindly note you are now the co-host. Okay, 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 no problem. Thank you. Yeah, our our speaker will soon be logging into the meeting. All right. Thank you. Henry, can you kindly um, share our flyer for the event? Pin it to this uh, meeting, please. Okay, let me do that now. Hello, Wally, welcome. Welcome, sir. Thank you for joining me. Our speaker will be joining us in a few minutes. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome, our Yifon uh, General Secretary, Shewa Ruolo. Thank you for joining us.
Welcome to Lakwa. Welcome our safety leader, Olusheg Lani. Thank you for joining. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Shewa. Welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening, Engineer Yodiji on a banjo, our guest yeah. speaker for today. Thank you for Good joining evening. me, sir. Good evening, everybody. We really appreciate you, sir. Uh, our guest speaker, please kindly give us a few more minutes for our um, young engineers to log in before we start proper, sir. Thank you so much for joining. All right, no problem. Yes, sir.
Recording in progress. Edna, you did this, Yes, sir. yes sir. While we are still waiting for our members, I want to just thank you once again for making our time. We understand the time difference. We really appreciate you. Welcome. How is it over there in Chicago, sir? Well, it's, it's okay. okay. Just a, just a rainy day. Wow. You are still looking very much young and and full of life, sir. Ah, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, sir. <laughs> Doing good to God. Sorry, Sorry I, I, I signed in on my son's computer and uh, I just installed Zoom on me. Uh, but you're showing NSE Kenya where I will be doing my presentation. But you see my name as an engineer, you did know bank door, and that one is from my iPhone because I'll be sharing my screen, that's why I will not be using my phone. But uh, you will see me as NSE Kenya. I don't know why I'm showing my name as NSE Kenya, I just copied the, the link and then put it there and show my name as NSE Kenya. So I don't know that. I don't know what that. Is. The reason for that. Is. Okay. If you okay. see my name, my name, and that's also NSC because okay. I'm sharing my my slide from my my son's uh, laptop. I'm not with my laptop, so I just uh, want to use a laptop. Use a laptop. Okay, that's fine by us, sir. Thank you so much. So are you You're a welcome. member of NSC Kedja branch? Sorry, sorry. Are you a member of NSC Kedja branch? Um, well, I, I fellowship with, with you guys because I was living very close by. Yes, he I is. Actually, I'm actually, I actually joined NSC from Ajakuta. And when oh, I came back to Lagos, when I came, I came back, back to Lagos, you are very you are at my doorstep, so you are my people. Um, I will say I'm, I'm, I'm a Kenya member. Wow, that's great. Good evening, Ma. Our Deputy President, Ma. Thank you for joining me. Good evening, my supersonic coordinator. Well done. Thank you so much, ma, for always making our time for us. We appreciate you. It's the least I can do. You guys are doing so much, and I'm so very, very proud of you. Thank you. We'll be starting in a few more minutes. We just want more guests to... Um, no problem. Uh, more participants to log in there will start. Thank you, ma. Uh, that, that's fine. Engineer, Engineer, you did your number, no Joe. Yes, ma'am. Good ma. to see you. Yeah, I guess, ma. Good to see your face again. Thank you, ma. I appreciate yeah. you. Yes, sir. And thank you for honoring our invitation. Yeah, the pleasure is always mine. When I hear of uh, NSC Kenya, I am always uh, obliged. Uh, you see how quickly I answered him when he asked if you were a member of Ikeja branch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. I know what it is. Good evening, our mommy engineer, Idiot uh, Amosu. Thank you so much, FNSC, for joining me, man. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be with you. Good evening, mommy. Good evening. Nice yes, to hear you, my DP. We are back. That time, it's, it's, nice it's nice to be with all of you. <laughs> Go to the point. Eh? You all make me proud seeing you there. Thank you, Thank Mom. You so much, Mom. Messiah, where are the others? I hope they are all here. Yes, Ma, is, we'll be starting in. I where guess, is, the uh, is the permanent secretary here? The general Hello. secretary, um, Shewa Rolo is online. I'm here, yeah, yeah, Ma. Good yeah. afternoon, Ma. Good afternoon, Shewa. <laughs> nice to have you here, Ma. Nice to hear your voice, too. I'm here. I know Good that you're right here. here. Yes, Ma, I am. Okay, our senior engineers, are, as always, have um, shown us what it is to be up and do when it comes to time. This is already 5.05. Our deputy president is here, our mom is here, and our guest speaker. I don't think um, we should waste, waste much time. This is already 5.05, um, and we have 18 participants online. Uh, deputy president, Ma, do I have your permission to carry on? Please 
please please go ahead. We are we are known for time in the Kedja. So thank you so much, Ma. We are known for timekeeping. Yep. All right. Um, so we'll begin straight away with um the opening prayer and um, branch anthem. I'll be calling on the foreign assistant general secretary, Henry Uzo, to um give us the opening prayer, which will be the second stanza of the national anthem, and then our iconic Ikeja branch anthem. Thank you so much, Harry. Thank you very much, my coordinator. Um, with all due respect to our deputy vice president, um, our mother in the house, our guest speaker for the day, my coordinator of the Young Engineers Forum of Ikeja branch, and fellow leadership members or leadership team members of the Young Engineers of the Keja branch and uh, my fellow Young Engineers. Uh, my name is uh, Henry Tochuku Uzo, GMNSC, and I'm here to open the prayer or start today's event with the second standard of the national anthem. O oh God of creation, direct our noble cause, guard our leaders' rights, help our youth the truth to know, in love and honesty to grow, and living just and true. Great lofty heights attain to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. Amen. Now, after having the second stanza of the National Anthem as our opening prayer for the event, we also want to follow suit with um, the branch anthem. I'll be playing the branch anthem now, so each and every one of us, wherever we are, we can follow through with the song. So I'll be playing the branch anthem now. Thank you. Discretion we will build will be known for us. Thank you very much, um, our Yvonne Assistant General Secretary, for that. Kindly please um, share the slide, the flyer for the event, please. Please, uh, 
while this meeting is ongoing, every young engineer who is not speaking, kindly mute your mic, please. Read one, Ibrahim. Please unmute yourself. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me, Henry? Am I audible? Hello, Henry, confirm you can hear me, please. Can you hear my voice? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Am I audible? This is about me, sir. Okay, can you mute your mic? Thank you. Please, who can confirm me if I'm audible, please? I don't know my mic. Yeah, I'm audible. Okay. Yeah, audible. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, man. Um. Henry, Uzo, kindly share the flyer for the event, please. Hello? Please can you can kindly share the flyer for the event? Can hear me. I can hear you. Okay, while we're waiting for him, let me just go on. Okay, once again, I want to say a very big thank you to our senior engineers in the house, the deputy president of the Nigeria Society of Engineers, the first female deputy president and the president in waiting. Uh, engineer Margaret Oguntala, FNSC. Thank you so much for joining Ima. We also want to acknowledge the presence of our mother in the house. Another um, icon, the first female agricultural engineer in Nigeria, uh, Engineer Idiot Amosu, Amosu, FNSC. Thank you so much, Ma, for joining in. Um, I don't know if Engineer Nimot is here, the branch um, treasurer. NSC branch treasurer. We also want to thank our guest speaker, Engineer Onabanjo, for joining me. We appreciate you, sir, for honoring our request to be our speaker at this speaker's event. Um, the Young Engineers Forum of NSC Kedja branch has been led by the leadership team, thought it wise to celebrate the, young, the, the World Youth Skill Day, which is a day set aside by the United Nations to celebrate um, youth, basically, across the world. Am I audible? I'm done with my mic. You are audible. We can hear you. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't know where the problem is from here or from. Okay, thank you so much, sir. It's a day celebrated yes. to mark the strategic yes. importance of equipping young people um, with skills for I would employment. Like to call on our distinguished guest for speaking. the event to start his presentation. Um, Harry, without uh, um, further ado, without wasting more time, somebody is uh, uh, somebody somebody doing a background. Wow, Harry, <laughs> okay. Oh, so sorry for the interru interruption, please. Ayola, Ayola, please mute your. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, so like I was saying, the World Youth Skill Day is a day celebrated every year on July 15th um, after its declaration in 2014. It's a day celebrated to mark the strategic importance of equipping young people with skills for employment, decent work, and entrepreneurship. And as the, um, the young engineers of NSC Kedja branch, the branch to beat, we thought it wise as young professionals to celebrate this day as a way of um, tagging along with the SDGs um, of the United Nations. So it's a day um, that has been added to provide a unique opportunity for dialogue between young people, technical and vocational education and training institutions, firms, employers and workers, as well as organizations, policymakers and development partners. So in the search for an ideal speaker for this year's event, um, we looked for an engineer who is versatile, who is well-skilled, who has what it takes to speak to young people being skilled. As a matter of fact, the team for this year's um, World Youth Skill Day 2022 is um, uh, transforming youth skills in the future. That's a worldwide um, team. But we as NSC Kedja brand, the young engineers, we chose um, the team, um, World Youth, the builders of a sustainable future. 
as young engineers, we understand our purpose. And as young professionals also, we know what it takes um, to contribute meaningfully to and the growth of, and development of um, the engineering profession, as well as our society. Because we as engineers are meant to be solution providers. And that is why we had to look for an ideal speaker. So um, while surfing through the net, I was um, fortunate to see a video uploaded by our guest speaker today, Engineer Onabanjo. I, 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 you know, I did on urban joy MNSC, who happens to be based in the United States. I saw a fantastic video which I shared with the members of the leadership team. And when we watched the video, we were so impressed that a senior engineer could be so skilled at this level. I've watched almost like two or three of his videos and we're impressed. And just this evening, the deputy really? president confirmed that he's a member of NSC Kedja branch. So that shows our senior engineers are up, up and doing when it comes to. Um, showing us the path to follow as young engineers. So we're so impressed by that and we had to speak to him and he graciously accepted to um, be our guest speaker for today. Despite the time difference, I've been following up with him all through and um, many at times I even chat him up when he's asleep or he's busy due to the time difference. But despite all this, he never um, made it difficult for us to reach out to him. I want to thank him specially for this. I would sincerely appreciate you, sir. We can't wait to hear you speak. Um, so without saying much, I think it would be best to read the citation of our speaker so we can um, get to know more about our guest speaker for today before he gives his presentation proper. At this moment, I would love to hand over to our Yifon General Secretary. And as our Deputy President, we call her our Permanent Secretary in person of Omosha Aroro, GMNSC. Thank you so much. So she will be reading the citation of our guest speaker. Okay, Michelle. Good evening, the um, Deputy President of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Engineer Margaret Obuntala, FNSC. Good evening, our mommy in the house, Engineer Idia Tamusu, FNSC. Good evening to every senior engineer present here today and to members of the leadership team of the Young Engineers Forum of Nigeria, Ikeja branch. Good evening to every young engineer present and every young professional present. In honor of um, the World Youth Skills Day 2022, like the coordinator said earlier, we are having our own program tagged skills skilled youth, the builders of a sustainable future. And we are privileged to have engineer Ayodeji Onobanjo, MNSC, as our facilitator for today. So here is a citation of engineer Ayodeji Onobanjo, MNSC. Engineer Ayodeji Onobanjo is a graduate of mechanical engineering of the University of Lagos, a current registered engineer and a member of the NSC. He has a background in various industries, including oil and gas, power generation, industrial fabrication, manufacturing and automation, and most recently in the maintenance and reliability engineering fields in the corrugated and flexographic packaging industry. Currently based in Illinois, USA, engineer Yodeji Onobanjo is also a, a NIMS certified CNC programmer slash operator in mill and lathe, a certified management consultant, accredited small business consultant and entrepreneur, and a performance and leadership coach. His life in the coaching world has been dedicated to the transformation of engineers, technologists, technicians, and craftsmen within, this, within a sphere of influence into the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial minded specialists able to step up their games beyond the common denominator of their technical abilities. He has been in the forefront of emphasizing critical thinking, innovation, creativity, and people management skills for the future of work in engineering. He has written many articles and, have, and has undertaken many speaking engagements covering the concepts of leadership, productivity, and entrepreneurship as related to engineers. Engineer Ayodeji is happily married with two kids, 
His hobbies include reading, playing chess, swimming, and woodworking. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much, our permanent secretary. That was that was a lovely one, lovely read. Um, at this point, I believe we've all um, been able to listen to the wonderful citation of our guest speaker today, who is well prepared to inspire us as young engineers to go out there and do wonders, especially as young engineers of NSE Keja branch, the branch to beat. So thank you so much, sir. At this point, we'll make you the co-host so you could share your screen and give us your presentation, sir. Thank you once again. Yeah, thank you very yeah, much. Thank don't you forget, very much. Don't forget, forget that. Don't forget I, that. I'll, I'll be I'll sharing, be my, sharing screen my screen from, from the, the one, one that says NSC Kedja, not the one that shows my, my name. I don't know. But my name is. Yes, sir. Yeah, OK. Thank you. Made it that the co host, that particular account. All right. So let me know when it's time for me to start. Yes, sir. Confirm you can see you are now the co-host, so you could share your screen, sir. Uh, all right. Share screen. Yeah, good day, everyone. Uh, that's, that's good evening over there. there. It's, uh, it's uh, the level 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 over here, over here in Chicago. Um, um, happy World Youth happy Tuesday. World Youth Tuesday. I, I hope that I, I, uh, we have enough we have youth enough in our midst because we are here to address them. To address them. But, uh, because because I'm so sorry that we have uh, uh, mainly our uh, professionals, our uh, mommies and daddies, to be in the field uh, here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, sir. All right. So uh, I will say once again, after World Youth Skills Day, today is July 15, as we know it. The topic for today is skilled, skilled youth, the builders of a sustainable future. Uh, the theme from the United Nations, uh, which I checked online, is about transforming youth skills for the future. Transforming youth skills for the future. So we have some keywords here, which we're going to do some justice to. You know, youth skills, future, sustainable. Um, what is the significance that uh, United Nations indicated for us? Uh, the significance is that in order to recognize the strategic significance of providing our young people with uh, certain skills that are necessary for, for employment, that are necessary for, you know, they, they emphasize respectable employment and also entrepreneurship. Uh, United Nations declared today as the World Youth Skills Day, far back as 2014. Now, before we go ahead, there is something I saw from the World Economic Forum, World Economic Forum 2020 Skills Outlook. This is telling us what the skills of the year and the year ahead is going to be. And this is just a snapshot of it. These are the skills that are growing and these are the skills that are declining. We are growing in analytic thinking and innovation. Active learning and learning strategies is growing creativity, leadership, complex problem solving skills, emotional intelligence reasoning and many things. These are the growing skills that are people, employers, and everybody in the world are looking forward to see in their candidates. So the best candidate for the future of jobs, future of work, either in engineering or elsewhere, must have this perspective in their mind that they need to grow these skills. 
these are the skills that if you do not have it or if you have it you think it's not enough you need to work on yourself have that self-awareness to be able to work on your skills and develop yourself in this area now they also said some measure some skills that are declining it's not that they are not in use but they are declining which means that if you have them before uh, the, 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 if, if, if it's your 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 main uh, skill, uh, these skills are declining, which means that they are getting uh, you know, more and more irrelevant, uh, or maybe the percentage of their requirement is, is diminishing. And you know, for records, this is from World Economic Forum. You know, uh, so the question in people's mind, if you have some of our youth around now, you want to ask some questions that in the previous skills, we are talking about analytical thinking, innovation, complex solving, leadership, influence, emotional intelligence, and all the rest. But you know, to, to them, they, we, they, may, they may be thinking that we are here to talk about networking skills, internet of things, uh, industrial technology things, uh, or maybe we will, we'll be talking about data architecture, um, data analytics, and all the rest. But to, to their surprise, they may be asking questions that why not talking about software engineering, programming, and all the rest. But very soon we we'll get to that to that uh, uh, to the reason why that is not a. That is not in vogue. So, as technical uh, specialists and most importantly, as young mechanical engineers, uh, you might want to ask the question: Why? Why are these skills that are not taught in the general school, you know, or in general school's curriculum, are now you know gaining uh, 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 momentum for the future of work for, for, for young engineers? So, it is a question that many people will be asking, and. A reason why United Nations is also emphasizing on these skills that are going. So in engineering schools, the fact is that they, are, they mostly offer art skills that are teachable, that are quantifiable, that are factual, and that are objective in nature, and which can be reflected in qualification and appellation. You understand? That is what universities and schools are meant for, are meant to do. They are meant to give you objective reasoning, not something subjective. You are, you, if you have a research that is not popular, you have to work on your research. You have to be able to convert it from being a subjective idea that you have and go out there to get data, to quantify it, and to be able to form your research, which is a, which, which either though is a, 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 a subjective reason of, of, of yourself and be able to prove the data to the world. That is what in general and school time. We, are, we, are, we, are, we, teach, we teach factual, we teach objectivity in our schools, you understand? And as mechanical engineers, you know, we, 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 we want to make sure that when we are measuring temperature, we're not just saying that if the temperature is cold or hot because those are relative terms. As mechanical engineers, as engineers, we are taught in school to be objective. We are taught in school to offer quantifiable and measurable and, and measurable quantities, isn't it? So, my view, you know, uh, while I was preparing this, I, I something dropped on my mind, and I said that well, fresh from engineering school or college, a young rookie engineer is like a jigsaw puzzle that needed to be put together in a particular way and manner that aligns with the expectation and dynamic orientation of the marketplace. We all know what a, a jigsaw puzzle is, you know? Jigsaw puzzle, you can, you can pick a piece and, and try to put it together and it will fit. But as you go along the line, you realize that that thing fits at that place, but it's not properly fitted. You understand? It's not properly fitted. When you are looking at the orientation of the image you are trying to create, you are looking at the image of the future that you want to create for yourself. You begin to, you know, put the pieces together, knowledge from street, street knowledge, um, experiential knowledge, and everything, you begin to put them together in a jigsaw. And before you're able to create that, that, that full form of, of, of yourself. So you can quote me anywhere. This is, this is just my view about, about the future of work, that every young people, every young person, 
will have to see themselves as a puzzle that they ask and that has to be solved. And also, this also goes to the employers. Employers have to see them as a puzzle to be molded, to be trained, and to be to be to be you know put out there in the in the in the in the field of work. Okay, now so I, I, I just want you know because I like to illustrate and I like to illustrate when I'm speaking to engineers, I like to you know look for images that speak to them. And that is why I come about this this image of you know a gear that has a jigsaw puzzle that is puzzled and then it has to be put together. So I said, well, let's look at an engineer, a young engineer who is coming out of school, and the first thing that needed to be done is that self-assessment. Because before you can have personal development, you have to first of all be able to assess yourself for the missing skills and knowledge that are needed in the field of work. If you want to have a sustainable job, or to have a sustainable future, you have to first of all have an introspection about yourself and be able to say, oh, wow, this is what I want to do. Then I need these skills. And you can do that through mentors. You can do that through through counseling, through coaches and all the rest. And that is one of the things I do for, well, you know, for, for, for young engineers. The next one is that you have to now take a step further to go out there and search and acquire relevant skills. There are a lot of skills out there. You just have to bring your filter and narrow down and search what you need. There are a lot of courses, there are a lot of information, there are a lot of data. In fact, we are living in a world of of data that the data we are churning out every day, every month is, is, is tremendous. And that is why we now have to move everything to the cloud, you know, cloud computing, where we now have to store, store our data because we are, we are, look at before now, storage devices, we are moving for, if you have five MB flash drive or 10 MB, you will be proud of yourself. Then we, have, then we will migrate to 20, to gigabytes. Then we are in terabytes. You understand? So data is, is, is so much out there. We are churning out data every day. So a young engineer you know, who is ready to, to prepare for, for the future of work must be able to filter, you know, remove content from the noise in the marketplace and look at what it needs to do so that he can be able to have a laser beam focus on, the, on that career and be able to move forward without wasting time. So. The next step is to act, act towards proper fit and assimilation, ensure balance and unpolarized learning. You know, learning to me, I, I see it as acquisition of two things. You acquire skills and you acquire knowledge. And these two, as an engineer who wants to go out there must be balanced in a way. You should be able to balance your skill with your knowledge. You know, if you have so much skills, that you have you don't have knowledge of the of the trade, you'll be like the roadside technicians or mechanics that you have that yeah, they have the skill, they can do, they can uh, handle some things with some physical, uh, 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 they can handle tools, they can do uh, piping, pipe blown, welding, they can do fitting, mechanical fitting and all that. But they do if they do not have the knowledge of the trade they'll be limited in a way, you know, they'll be limited in a way. So that is just about that. Now the next line is that, is that you need to get a line, you need to attain professional status, get yourself fitted out there, join associations, be well-rounded, be well-fitted, be well-balanced. You know, we don't know about what is called balancing, you know, dynamic and statical balancing of wheels. You know, you have to ensure that there's no vibration that is going to take you off your path. And it's going to take it off your career, you know. That is that, that is the next step. And the la and the last step is this: because you know that you are doing all this, you know, this alignment of purpose, this thing to be able to engage. You want to be able to be a driver. You want to be able to to, to collaborate and get fitted into your association, into your field, into everything. Because the main purpose of getting all this in the first instance is that you want to be to be able to get to that level of self-actualization. When we look at the Maslow's theory of human needs, you want to be able to you know, gather all these things, your needs, you start from your need. Self-assessment, what do you need? Survival skills, you get your survival skills that you move forward. 
you know, you, you, you get married. Oh, when you get married, you, you, you now know that, oh, I want to have a business of my own. To have a business of your own, then you have to have some skills. Apart from that, your technical ability that you can bring on board. Now, there are some things I said that every rookie engineer desires a lot. Number one, that every, every engineer, every young man out there, they want to uh, be, be more valued assets wherever they are working. They want to be highly sought after, sought after in, in, in the job market. And also they want to grow beyond the cover of the industry standard. You understand? If the standard is that, oh, we offer you a startup, I mean, when you're just starting up with us, we offer you 50,000 50, naira. And then you will be under 50,000 for like five, I mean, for like one or two years. But if you're able to bring something on board, something, skill set that is beyond the standard, that can help you in a way to get promoted to get you know like two times ahead of others ahead of your colleagues so we have to look out for that so also it's also a desire to occupy positions of great prominence you know that is the desire of every engineer you want to you want to attain a, a position of influence and also a position of leadership in your career and in your business also you want to be able to transform your those your technical skills your knowledge and what of experiences into a financial rewarding and successful entrepreneur venture. We have among us entrepreneurs, you know, engineers who have been able to create a niche for themselves. They have been there, they have done that, and they have created a business. They are now employers of labor. They have been able to do all these things to transform those technical skills of theirs and those knowledge they have gathered over years into an enterprise. An enterprise that is not only serving, I mean, well, catering for themselves, but catering for the future. Now, every rookie engineer must realize the following. You desire some things, but you also have to realize the following. You have to be technical sound with a blend of both know-how, which are your skills, and your know-why, which are your subject matter knowledge. Many people have the know-how. They know how to do some things, but they cannot, if, if anything, the, it's not going the way it used to go every day, and they, they encounter a problem. They do not know how to troubleshoot. They cannot say this is why this is happening. And if you are learning and you're not able to combine both your skills and the knowledge matter together as you are learning, then you may be limited in a way. If you have so much knowledge, the, the reverse is the case. You have so much knowledge of how things work, economic theory, engineering analysis, whatever, whatever, but you do not have the skills to execute some things. Then well, people will say that you don't, you don't have to have all the things. You can hire people to get these things done for you. But the point is this, if you hire people, well, if you are a, a CEO of organization, you can hire people. But the moment you want to transcend into that field of entrepreneurship, you want to be able to do things by yourself, you realize that attack your startup. And that's one of the reasons why startup fails within the first two or three years. At your startup, you have to have a general idea. You don't have to be a specialist. You have to have a general idea of how things work, of know-how, to augment your know-why. You also have to realize that skills are temporary. There's no skill that is permanent. The skills are temporary, uh, especially uh, when we talk about the, the technical skills. Uh, the skills are like milk that goes sour with time. They are learned and they are developed and they can be forgotten and they can be refreshed. That's why we have refresher courses, you know, from OEMs coming to factories to you know, train people on how to better handle their equipment and their machines now in our premises. And also, people must be prepared to learn, to unlearn, and to relearn for sustainability. Our youth must be able to learn. They were able to unlearn, I think, to, 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 to realize that we are living in a dynamic uh, uh, world where old ideas die and innovation comes to disrupt, and then we have to be able to have that adaptability to you know, recognize this change and to make sure that we tap into the opportunities that come with the change. Also, we need soft skills, otherwise known as people skills or social skills. And more importantly, what is now called meta skills. 
Meta skills dwells more on adaptability. It dwells on self-awareness, you know, on self-confidence and resilience, because these are the things that will help you in the first instance to even recognize the fact that you are lacking in that area and you need to go and learn. We all know that change is constant, change is unpredictable, change is necessary, and it's extremely difficult. So like and if you know what to say, and I saw this online, I said, this is a very good thing. Nobody likes to change. We all like to, you know, that there is this thing called inertia, you know, and if you remember that, uh, the notice law of motion that says that everybody would like to, you know, be in a state of rest. You know, we don't, we don't want, we don't like to be perturbed. We want to be in a state of rest. If you are sitting down, you want to be, you want to be sitting down. And if you are in emotion, you want to keep going in that, that very straight line, unless an external force, external external force or external aggression or, or, or change is acted upon you to change otherwise, to move otherwise. So everybody have that inertia. I have, I have my inertia, but that ability to overcome that inertia is very, very important in the future of work. The work, the, the world we are living in is, is a world of uncertainty. It's a world that is dynamic. And if you are sitting down at a spot, you know, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, uh, it is not likely that they're going to fit into the, into the field of work, into the future of work that we have today, uh, 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 as, as, as we see it in, uh, as you see it in uh, uh, industrial 4.0 going forward. So I have some certain reminders for us. And number one is that as basic automation and machine learning move toward becoming commodities, these things are becoming commodities. Before now, they are, they are, they are specialized fields that I use in militaries and all that, but they are now becoming and uh, uh, commodities, you, you see them on our phones. You know, you, you can oh, you can you can lock your phone with your fingerprint. You can lock your phone with your face, face uh, facial recognition, and all that. Machine learning. You know, they are moving forward because they can become commodities. So certain uniquely human skills will become more valuable, and that is this. This is given by Devin Fielder, okay, as a research, research director at the Institute for the Future. Automation, machine learning, robotics. So it says that uh, according to smart skills, automation is going to reduce the demand for specialists. So mastering these skills, these unique human skills will make you a stronger individual in the automated future. It's not saying that your specialization is not going to matter. Your specialization demands or commands a lot of respect. Your, your, your ability to have that your subject matter expertise is well sought after. In fact, if you are looking for a job, if you are looking for anything, those are the first things that people are going to test you about. They are going to screen you based on your subject matter expertise. Are you, are you, are you what you say you have? And first, are you an engineer? You know. Number two, we need to remember that technology and computers have not really eliminated humans at work. You know, there is this thing, you know, at the uh, year 2000, 1999, when we're having a kind of uh, uh, computers saying that technology and computers are going to you know, eliminate humans at work, that everywhere is going to be filled with robots and uh, you're going to eliminate people at work. But that is not, that is, that is a fallacy. Technology and computers, they are not eliminating people, but they are displacing people. They are displacing people from certain tasks, you know, from those number crunching, technical drawing, and those repetitive and autonomous tasks that can be predicted through data. If I can, if I can predict something through data, a, a certain movement that a shaft has to be lifted up for like one second for a product to come and then for a label to be put on that photo and then for the conveyor to move. If I can, if I can, you know, write an algorithm for that, for that movement, which is predictable, which is constant, which is, which is repeated, then there's no need for me to put human beings there 
doing such tasks, I can utilize that person better in, 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 in different settings within that same industry. So anything that we can predict through data, we will, human beings will be, will be, will be removed from such jobs. And we have already, already seen, seen that happening uh, through various automation. So let's move forward. Also, we need to remember that humans are displaced towards those tasks that require critical thinking, because uh, there's no amount of uh, there's no amount of uh, algorithm or, or programming that we can do that can do that critical thinking, creativity, you know, curiosity, empathy. Most of the things that we can automate are those tasks that, you know, when we when we examine uh, the brain. You know, the brain of, of, of human beings, you saw that the left side of the brain controls certain things and the right, right, right side of the brain controls certain things. So most things in the left brain, in the left side part of the brain, you know, that, that the left part of the brain is controlling can actually be, you know, uh, 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 be automated. Not all, but the majority of them can be automated. And that has been the focus of the people in that field, that how can we take this task away from human beings, replace them with machines that can do them better, with less, with lesser error and lesser absenteeism, you understand? And then we can now direct human beings to those areas of creativity, of thinking, of showing empathy, of customer service, of building trust and collaborating with other people in the industry. So it's, it's a fact that humans are way smarter than, than any algorithm that can ever be written. There's no algorithm that can remain, that can replace human beings and no algorithm can ever replace physics, you understand? Physics, your knowledge of physics, it's, it's there. It's not, nothing is going to take it away from you. And no algorithm can be written to replace it. But it can only be used to automate that knowledge, you understand? So every engineer that is coming out, out, out there, whatever field you may, you may have, just know that the knowledge of physics, the knowledge of, uh, of chemistry, of biology is there. But we can only automate what they do, their outcome, the motions that are involved in these areas are all are things that we can, we can, we can work about. Now, automation, automation is reducing manual labor jobs and not engineering jobs. And so we cannot continue using a binary approach. You know, when I started learning PLC programming, uh, I, I saw that, uh, okay, you have to write some code, ladder logic and all that, and then everything is like yes or no. For an action to, be, for an action to take place, it's either high or low, you know? It's either one or zero. Life is not binary. The world of work is not binary. The world of work is ambiguous. We are going to make people different from the world. And so reality is too complex to see it through the prison of right or wrong, or through black or white, yes or no, through or false only. You know, there are different shades of gray in between. So when we're preparing for the future of work and how people can be can, can have a sustainable future, we have to talk about this thing that affects people that they're going to work with, how people think. The fact that you go to, to, to a place and as an engineer, you are relegated. You know what can you do about that? It's not just to to to, to you know to mourn and, and 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 get frustrated. You know, but you have to be able to. Sorry. So you have to be able to uh, uh, do something about yourself through that self actualization, through that meta. I mean, uh, 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 that 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 meta skill that we're going to be talking about in a moment. So these uniquely human skills of the future are the skills that can help successful engineers grow beyond the call, as well as the common denominator of being technically savvy. I call it common denominator because every engineer, for instance, when we are in, uh, when you're just admitted to the school, to engineering school, uh, I think year one, year two, we all do the same course, isn't it? We all, we all go through the same, until when you get to year three and year four, before you begin to do you know, courses that are peculiar to your, to your field. Knowledge, technical skill, is a common denominator for all of us that are going into the field of work in the future. But certain things, certain skills will set you apart from the rest of the people. And certain skills will keep you in that job. 
No, it yes. will be that. Please remember us not to judge it. Hello, uh, am I on? Hello? You are, you are on, sir. Sorry okay. for the interruption. All right. So certain skills will, will get you a job, will give you an advantage over other people. And when you are also engaged in that job, certain skills will give you an edge for promotion, an edge to keep you in that job, you know? Uh, uh, and so these are the skills that will enable engineers to see the bigger picture of the type of future that they would like to feature. You know, you have to be able to picture the type of future that you would like to feature. And these are, you know, fantastic people that has, uh, you know, that has uh, been able to achieve this kind of feat. Uh, we have, uh, uh, um, what's the what I name again in the, this uh, first female black engineer in NASA, uh, Mary Jackson, or what you have to do is Letima who actually work, you know, th this guy here actually work, use his skill to work on what Edison did. But Edison is very not popular for this uh, uh, incandescent uh, light bulb than him because he's actually the one that, that, you know, that worked better on that, on that uh, uh, invention that make it to what we're able to do today. And we have uh, Mary Jemison, we have uh, Osla Bonds, you know, and the rest like that. So what are these unique human skills that we are even talking about? What are they? What are these skills? Now, I saw this and I said, let me quickly talk about it. You can see now that this specific, this skills, they are, they are skills that are specific to human beings that machines and robots cannot do. And any rookie or professional engineer can actually learn these skills through education. And I, this, these two skills are highlighted. Soft skills. I'm sure we must have we must have, we must have had about soft skills. Those people call it people skills or social skills. And also that is nearly uh, 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 emphasized nowadays is called meta skills. Now, it is the meta skills that will allow you to be able to learn both your technical skills and your soft skills. So your technical field refers to a person's occupational competency-based skills and subject matter knowledge. It's apparent and a common denominator for all technical specialists. The soft skills are character traits and they are interpersonal skills, you know, that are characterized by a person's relationships with other people. How are you able to function in teams? How are you able to collaborate? How are you able to communicate your idea? Across board, how are you able to write good technical reports to your to your to your to your boss, you know, and, and sell your point in a very smart way, you know, that that depicts the reality on that project site that where, where where you're working. So these are adaptable within different environments around different people. When you go to this project site, you need to bring all these soft skills from your toolbox and apply them as you need them. Now, the meta skills. Well, I, I, I'm sure some of us will be hearing this for the first time, especially our, our, our young engineers. These are clusters of uh, behavioral skills, you know, rather than competency based skills that we have listed above for both technical and soft skills. A, a, a meta skill is a top level skill that governs uh, the learning of soft and technical skills. So it helps overcome inertia. You know, initially, when I was showing that idea, uh, that uh, gear, gear narration, I mentioned inertia. We all have inertia, and we have to be able to overcome our inertia. That inertia is that ability to, to rise up to the occasion, to, to, to recognize your deficiency, your weakness, and to you know, stand up and not to entertain com complacency. So it helps overcome inertia. It helps to cultivate, cultivate growth mindset. I want to grow beyond this. I can, I can achieve better results. You know, I can do this. I, you know, that, that resilience, that despite failure, despite uh, uh, negative results, you still want to go ahead and, 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 and develop. You know that there is something good about this and you want to go, to go ahead and, and get it up. Adaptability. You know, your, your, your response to change and lifelong learning. 
you know, this is a skill. I, I, I initially I never knew that this is this is supposed to be a skill set, but it, it's been it's been because anything you can teach people to learn, you know, it's a skill. So because coaches, professional advisors, and all the rest are identifying this and are using it to kind of motivate people that want to grow beyond the core to be able to you know stand up and overcome that their inertia and and procrastination and all the rest and 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 uh, sentiments and uh, uh, stereotypes I, I, I leave all those inertia behind them and go for what they want now if if anybody that knows me know that i love to use this model of uh, of uh, of the hash value because it can be applied in various ways you know to to various scenarios the way you want it and uh, I use in, uh, I use this I use this image a lot. I call it the, the, it's called the ice batch model. And I say here that if we model the totality of the learning profile of any young rookie engineer as required for employment in the future of work, uh, either for entrepreneurial ventures or whatever, uh, what we will see is that above the waterline, you know, what we see as ice batch is just, is just about approximately ten percent above the waterline. And this is a totality of, 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 the, of the technical skills, or otherwise called the art skills you are bringing on board. Your, your ability to write code, your software as a software engineer, uh, your ability to write programs, and uh, your networking skill, your IT skill, you know, all those fantastic um, uh, 21st century uh, skills, technical skills, your whole be above the waterline. Of, 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 of an ice bag, of, of an ice bag model. Uh, these are the, your subject matter expertise. These are the appellations that people see. You know, these are readily recognizable. If I see you as an engineer, even from the way you, you, you dress up, you know, I can tell. You know, from the way you are able to do some things, I can, I can say, yeah, this, this is an engineer. You know, from, 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 from your degree, I can say you're, you're an engineer. You know? And these are objective qualities. And also, we are called the common denominator of success for everybody, every engineer. What, what, that, that thing above the waterline, they are not the thing that sets you apart from other people because your degree, somebody else is having it. You know? And they all have a greater chance of being automated. All those things you see above, they have a greater chance of being automated. So beneath the waterline, we have about 90% of the critical mass of that iceberg lying below the waterline. And for you to be able to, to, to attain those things, you have to be ready to overcome your inertia and dive beneath the bottom of that, of that water surface. This is the totality of the soft skills and the metal skills. These are subjective qualities, you know, your ability to, to empathize, emotion, read emotion to you know, work with people, different ideas. And these are latent and potent qualities that people do not see. You know, they are buried beneath the waterline. You know, uh, uh, very low chance. And that is why we cannot judge a book by its cover. You understand? Well, most of the time when we are doing employment, recruitment, HR people, you know, and nowadays they are going below the waterline to look for those qualities not just technical skills alone. You know, if, if you see any HR expert now, they'll agree with me on what, on what we're talking about, that you cannot just hire people based on their technical part. Some people do not even believe in your, in your certificate. Either you have two, one, two, two, or third class. They want to assess you based on some other things that they know that would be of greater benefit because all the skills above the waterline, they can be taught. All the skills can be automated. If you are not able to do something, I can buy a software, install a software. If you are, if you are not able to do uh, payroll effectively, we can buy a payroll software. We can replace those tasks with you know, technology. But there are certain things that cannot be replaced with technology. The ability to manage people, to manage the staff, to manage the project site, to write good reports that are compelling, that when you send a report to your, to your to your superior in the head office, you know, they're able to, 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 to see your, how your ideas, your, your technical jargon is translated into financial terms, you know, profit, bottom line, 
rich people are rich. So these are the things that young engineers must focus on. You have to, first of all, realize the fact that you need these skills to survive. And they are like icing. They are like icing on, 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 on your cake. You know, if you are modeled as a cake, you, 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 the, the core are the things we see in the technical skills. But what, that decorative uh, condiment that is added onto, you know, that, those colorful things that will attract employer you know, that will attract businesses you know to you that people want to, to work with you are those qualities that are you know regarded as soft skills and, and, and metal skills so somebody called gustavo rossetti uh, there, there are different models online if you if you, if you if you if you go through this after this lecture you, there, are, there are different uh, uh, models online but this one speaks to me in a way and i and i love it it's narration of meta skills. It talks about creativity, talks about self-awareness, which we have talked about before, and also talked about resilience, which I've mentioned during the course of this of this my presentation. You know, it, it talks about uh, creativity and th those things that comprise your, your problem solving ability, your ability to innovate and your ability to improvise. If you are not creative, you know, you, you find yourself in an unusual terrain. You have always done something this way. You have always used this machine to do something in a particular way, but uh, you now find yourself, yeah, yeah, you, want, you want to do something and you are kind of being limited. Your ability to improvise at that point. Your ability to, you see, people say that uh, most, most machines have already been created. What we are creating now are jigs and fixtures. You know, when you, have, when you buy a jig, and you are able to attach it to a tool that you have, you realize that you're able to do much more than what you used to do with that tool before. You know, I, I, I love woodworking and I, I, I just realized that, oh, for me to do many things now, it's just for me to buy a jig and attach it to my, to, my, to my tool that I already have, then I'll be able to scale up the functionality of that tool and the advantage of that tool. So you are able to, 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 to improvise. And this uh, uh, is also embedded in that your ability to innovate. You cannot improvise without that ability to innovate. And when you are innovating, you are going out there to solve problems. You are looking at what is needed, what is missing in the process, in the product, in, in, in anything. And you want to come out with, 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 a, with a solution. You know, a unique solution that is targeted to solving that problem, you know, as we, as, we, as we move forward. Okay, the next one is resilience. You know, your ability to experiment, to, you know, experimentation. Not to get uh, 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 overwhelmed with failure. You know, and that ability to, even though you fail, you're able to cash in, you're able to cash in on your failure, and you're able to, so let, let, let's go through it one by one. What are skills are high other skills that uh, you know, enable you to engage with functional expertise more effectively? Uh, what are skills, uh, uh, sorry, I think there's a typo error here. Uh, is, is a, a catalyst for learning and building new skills faster. Uh, a, a, a master skill, a meta skill is a master skill that magnifies and activates other skills. Your mental skills are permanent, while functional skills are temporary. The core of mental skills has a competitive advantage that is called adaptability. You know, it increases the chances to thrive in a change, to adapt quickly to change, because change is constant. Don't forget, change is, is, is constant, is unpredictable, and change is necessary. If you want to evolve, we, we have to entertain change. So your ability to adapt, you know, that is the core message of meta skills. And adaptability requires understanding your reality, you know, adapting our mindset and adopting new ways of working. You know, we, 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 something similar to, to being able to improvise. You know, to achieve that, you must master self-awareness, creativity, and also uh, resilience. So adaptability says, uh, I saw this online also, and I said, let me quickly capture it. It says, in terms of chaos and change, you know, we all live in a, in a, in a world of uncertainty, of, of, of chaos and of change. Your adaptability comes to life, allowing you to be flexible 
where others are rigid. You know, allow you to, 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 to come to terms with reality, you know, and not to live in denial. If you are living in denial, you are not going to be fit for the future of work. For the future, you are not going to be. If you get a job today, it's, it's for sure that less than less than six months you are going to be fired, because no employer is tolerant to you know your your lackadaisical like attitude or your, your 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 inability to work in a team, even though you are the best in the subject matter. You are the best in that subject matter, but if you are always a club in the wheel of success. Of the team, uh, you, you you might be fired, and then that will lead into into frustration, you know, uh, and, and may, may that not be uh, our portion. So, just maybe a little bit more of the notes that are, that I've written about self awareness. Um, self awareness having an accurate view of one's skills, you know, your abilities, your strengths, and your weaknesses or shortcomings. It's about Self-awareness is also a key element of emotional intelligence and is vital within the workplace. You cannot stress that enough. Self-awareness encourages us to lead ourselves with authenticity and integrity, and in turn, better lead others. You cannot give what you do not have. If you can have you know, a grip on, on yourself, you can identify your skills, your shortcomings, and then you'll be able to lead other people. Um, and in summary, it is knowing yourself, accepting reality, and being empathetic. Empathy is very important. If you want to innovate, we have to be able to empathize. We have to be able to put our, ourselves in the shoe of our customers and, and, and you know, see things from their perspective. Then if you're able to see things from, from their perspective, that is where we understand them. And that is one thing about problem seeking. You know, engineers were, were, were problem solvers. That is a generic description. They were problem solvers. But those who are able to solve problems are not as valued as those who are able to spot those problems. Are able to identify, identify them as, as, as uh, 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 a problem that they need to be solved. Also, talking about the, the creativity aspect, you know, we said that a new reality requires a new way of thinking. And as Albert Einstein said, we cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. So creativity is more than developing original ideas. It's about exploring new ways of solving problems. Creativity is about integrating opposite forces through a yes and approach. Creativity is anchored on improvisation, problem solving, and innovation. It allows you to find innovative solutions to problems and make new connections with it pieces of information that are available to you. And lastly, resilience. Resilience is you know, just uh, dictionary de definitions anyway. It's overcoming failures and being able to keep trying. It enables experimentation and learning from mistakes without quitting. Resilience is the capacity to rise above adversity. When something goes wrong, you must manage to stay in control rather than let the situation take over you. This is a skill. Before now, I never knew it's a kind of skill that you know, we, we take some things for granted anyway. Resiliency indicates that making mistakes is a means to an end. Making mistakes is a means to an end. So we don't have to be afraid of to make mistakes. We must celebrate the lessons in our mistakes and not the mistakes themselves. So here I also saw something which I, which I captured my, my attention when I was preparing for this. Uh, I said that there are enemies of adaptability, you know, either as individuals, this will, will, will talk to us either as individuals. You know, don't forget that we have, we have identified adaptability as a main ingredient of meta skills that we need to, to, to acquire. This may be speaking to us as organizations, as associations, as individuals. You know, when you have hierarchy, most of the time, innovation is lost. Too much hierarchy, innovation is lost. It is fear. You're not able to take risk. Great ideas may be lying in that file or that shelf in your office. Something that has the potential to give you a breakthrough in, in whatever you're doing. But if you are fearful, you are not able to take risk and you don't have the God to test the waters 
uh, is an, is an, an enemy of, of adaptability and by, by extension, an enemy of attaining meta skills. You know, decision bias, you're not able to take decisions. Yeah. Habits, you know, so there are some habits, behaviors that are, that are, that are enemies of, of, of adaptability. Also, centralization, when everything has to go to the boss, you're not able to, you're not able to, uh, what do they call that thing? When you give jobs to other people, to, to I forget the word now. You're not able to, can somebody remind me? Uh, delegate, you know? You're not able to delegate. Everything has to, is too centralized, you know? Or it, it, it also infects business practices and all and all and all of that. So uh, skill deficit, short-term thinking, you know, you, you are thinking about now instead of thinking about future in 10 years. You are, you, your, your mission or your vision is too myopic. You know, you're not a, a long term thinking, you know, or you, you're not insufficient experimentation. You're not ready to test the waters of, or diversity. You know, you want to be, you want, you want everybody in, in your business to be your, 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 your kinsmen, people from your town or people from a certain tribe. You're not interested in diversity, you know, in giving an equal opportunity employer. You know, to people or as, as an individual, they're not ready to, to adapt and work in teams. You know, in, in this world of globalization, projects are handled by various experts around the globe and ability to come together to share ideas uh, 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 and to, and to you know, support that. Yes, the way I think is different from the way this person thinks. My culture is different from this person's culture and um, certain words cannot be tolerated. Certain, certain words cannot be used. You know what? What? What I see uh, as as an insult, somebody else might not see that as an insult. So I believe to moderate myself, and if you are not able to moderate yourself, then it's you, most likely that you are not going to uh, 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 exercise adaptability. And the future of work is 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 and comprises of all these things that young engineers will not be thinking about, and this which may be hurting them, but it hurt, hurting them because they are put so much effort to acquire the technical skills, they spend so much money to as, as, uh, get some certification, but those certifications are sitting down or they are not able to sell themselves to the world or they are not able to, 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 to make the best use of their, of their certification. The reason, if you look deeper, looking at that iceberg model, we see that the reason for failures is actually not what we are seeing. It's not from your technical skills, it's not from, from, from your certification. It is from your ability to develop your mental skills and your soft skills to interrelate with people, to collaborate in projects, you know, to be creative, you know, to solve problems and to communicate your ideas effectively to people. If all these are, are missing, uh, I, I think we need to first of all you now start by talking to our young engineers uh, that you need to develop the mental skills because that is the first thing. Your mental skills will help you to overcome inertia because you have a, an introspection. You have uh, you talk to yourself. You 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 have a, a self a, a self directed mm -hmm. analysis. You know something that is called a, 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 an internal locus of control. You know you you know that if I succeed, I'm responsible. If I'm not successful, I'm responsible. And you're not blaming other people. Instead of uh, having this external locus of control, you know, think that okay, uh, the success of this project, I can't, I can't determine it. It is, it is a, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a teamwork, and I'm, I can't, I can't be blamed for it. So if you, if you do not, if you have this totality of all these things that we have said today behind us, we will, we will know that uh, beyond uh, the the booze world of today of uh, networking, uh, Internet of Things. Uh, 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 embedded technology, um, uh, machine learning, automation, and all the rest. Uh, it's a given. We can hire people to get those things done for us. We can automate some of, so, some of those things, you know, but this we cannot automate. Things that algorithm cannot solve. Things that we cannot use to replace uh, physics are this core uh, 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 um, core skills of soft skills, of, of, of meta skills, that United Nations, you know, the United Nations has identified and has, you know, been able to create today 
as a special day for us to talk about them. If, if they are not important, the United Nations will not uh, create a day, especially for this kind of talk, for us to have it, you know, this kind of conversation, for us to have it around uh, young people getting uh, themselves ready for the future of work that lies ahead. Uh, I think at this time, uh, I may want to uh, stop there. This is actually the last slide for, for today. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. And if there's any questions, I think we can throw it around and, and, and discuss it. Wow. Thank you so much, sir. We really appreciate you for your time and for doing justice to this paper. Um, I, as a person, have really learned a lot, and I can say for sure that the young engineers, the fantastic young engineers of NSC Kedja branch, have definitely definitely learned a lot. We'll be giving out, um, we'll be giving it time for question and answers. Um, before then, I think one, one discuss and discussion, discussion. We are going to yes, discuss yes. it together. <laughs> definitely. Um, I was doing it. Let me the... help you with your recognitions to make it okay, easier for you. Okay, yes, I was actually going to speak so, about some people here. Yes. yes, I know, ma. I was actually <laughs> going to speak about the iceberg model, the ten percent and and the ninety percent um, skills, where ten percent is above the water line and ninety percent. I think that alone um, did justice to this topic, and we appreciate you so much, sir. So at this point, I would love to hand over to our mother, the deputy president, to. Help assist me because I could see a lineup of um, of, uh, of, <laughs> of, of some big wigs. Yeah, exactly, ma. I could see a lineup yeah. of them. And um, please, ma. I also want to recognize all members of the Young Engineers Future Leaders Committee, ably led by our coordinator. They are all online, ma. Thank you so much. Yes, ma. I can see. All okay, right, I, I also see that she's here. So let me just quickly help you with a few of the recognitions. Uh, we have here the vice president. Uh, collaboration and linkages of the Nigeria Society of Engineers, Engineer Chinna Saoko, Innocent Okoli, FNSC, FNIM. We have here uh, Engineer Dr. Abdul Rashid Babalola, FNSC, FNSCHE, National Exco member. Um, I see Meza has recognized the chairman of the Young Engineers Future Leaders Committee. Engineer Uchenchi Edosonwa, FNSE. And then, um, here. Engineer Bola Bido is here, the 10th chairman of uh, Nigerian Society of Engineers, Ikeja branch. And I can see Engineer Akintayo Akintola here. I think uh, Akintayo Akintola is number 12 or something. So, is I have help. <laughs> you can take over from there. Yes, ma. Thank you, ma. Okay, thank you so much, ma. We really appreciate you. Um, I, I could also see other senior engineers of uh, NSC Kedja branch. I don't want to take so much time in work, uh, in mentioning all of them. So I will, will just say thank you so much, our senior engineers, for always leading the way. I will so much appreciate your presence here. I can also see the young corporate members of NSC Kedja branch, people like Engineer Lawson Udose. David, can you kindly mute your mic, please? Thank you. I could see um, I could see Engineer Yusuf Abdul Razak. Thank you so much for, for joining me. So at this point, I think uh, it's best that we have the discussion session. So please, if you have a question to ask, or a contribution, kindly raise up your hands. So we give you the floor and you make your case. Thank you. I know many young engineers here, people like Kinsley Okoli, the young engineer of NSC Kedja Brad, who came first at the um, national competition last year. He's online. I know he's already itching with questions. Kingsley, can we start with you? Kinsley Okoli. Okay. Um, Olusha Molani, your hand is up. Kindly unmute and speak, please. Okay, thank you very much sir, for this wonderful presentation and uh, I hope you uh, any more on presentation. Uh, my question is uh, going to be a practical one. Uh, Hello, Olusha. Yes, 
Can you kindly um, put your mic properly? You are echoing, please. We can't hear you clearly. Thank you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, please, we can. Okay. Okay, did you hear me from beginning? Or I should start all over? Please start all over. Okay, I said I'm appreciating our facilitator for this uh, wonderful presentation and enlightening uh, presentation, which has really opened <clears throat> my eyes personally on some gray areas. But I really want to ask this practical question because when he started, I think he was able to make me understand some of the places where we, as a nation, we are defaulting in the four walls of our colleges, where we have, uh, yes, they call it maybe, let me put it this way, they call it practical class, but we go and at the end of the day, some of the tools we need in order for us to acquire the skills in our related course of, of study, they are not made available. Now, this is not a, this is a national problem, which I understand, but some of us, the young engineers, now we are faced with some of these challenges whereby you want to learn a skill. You have not started any, let me say, income. Olani, it seems you're... You Olani, are you learn a skill and you're being asked. <laughs> yes, sir. In trying to acquire a skill, how do you balance this with some of the, now, because uh, let me put my question this way. How do you acquire skills with the forces that are, sur are surrounding us? You want to learn a skill, if a hard skill, a technical skill, and you're asked to pay a huge sum of money. This, that, that. But thank God for NSA course, some on free basis and some on a platter of gold. So I don't know if you understand my question and how to. Hello, Alani. So thank you. Yes, sir. I'm done. Okay, so I'm done, thank sir. you so much. Well, we're losing touch with you at some point. I don't know, maybe it's your network. But no problem. Uh, our guest speaker is here. So, sir, please, did you get him clear? You will love him. Yes, I, I think I think I think I get him clear. I think uh, right. the, the problem is an is an endemic problem. It's not it's not alone in the struggle. I must confess, I've been in, I've been in that shoe before, and uh, many people may not know the reason why today I have interest in woodworking. I I actually live with an uncle while I was in the University of Lagos, and I I uh, there, there used to be. A carpenter within our compound, you know, somebody that rented a space. And then I see this guy when well, anytime I come from home from, from the University of Lagos at uh, Pan, I mean, at, at Onepan, you know, very motion area. And uh, during the weekend, I see this man the way he does what he do, And um, I fall in love with, with things. I saw that, I, in fact, for me to be able to take measurements in inches, you know, we are not used to that's imperial measurements. How to take measurement, say 518, um, 7116, um, you know, sorry for using my, my Yoruba language. So, I, what happened is this this is a problem and it's a general problem. We are not that fortunate to have parents that can buy you courses or train you in a certain way, but uh, they've been able to expose you to the walls of the university, and you have to have this. Uh, introspection how are you going to survive when you see the first thing you do which which we have done is to recognize that these are problems and you are not compassionate and you are able to overcome your inertia you want to learn and you do not have the money you know? but the problem is that you are not alone uh, that there are certain things you can do to augment yourself and how i still remain focused so what happened to me was that i was making good work i was making tropulos you know that, that time it was a time of wrought iron, wrought iron furniture. So remember, wrought iron furniture is getting uh, uh, I mean, momentum everywhere. People are fabricating uh, cutting rails, um, wrought iron table with glass top, uh, stools, and bar chairs, and all that. And uh, eventually, I made a breakthrough. That was a breakthrough at Ogun State, um, at uh, 
get to a hotel. You know, I be kucha and then and, and the person at I mean, get to a hotel in Jebode. You know, so I made the batch up for them while I was in school. While I was in school, I didn't do it, but I was able to learn the trade. And I told, told one of two people that I can do this. I got some pictures. You know, I do not have access to internet, but but, but, but catalogs. So what am I saying? One advice that I can give you, there are many advice that other people can give you, but many advice I can give you is that you have to use what you have. Identify your skills, identify your, your passion, what you love to do that can be translated into money. It sounds funny, but it works. And I'm a living example that I, 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 know, I, want, I know that I need to achieve this and this and this, but money is a problem. You know, you know in, in this part of the world where I have, if I do not have money to do something, I can get a loan. I can, I can register for a course and get a credit card and pay over time. But so unfortunately, we do not have it over there. But while I was there, I was able to identify my love for the craft of woodwork. And I was able to sponsor mm -hmm. myself buy books, you know, buy things. And I was able to, you know, to scale my way through, you know, to learn and to unlearn and to relearn, you understand? So that is just one uh, aspect that I can, I can, I can tell you uh, that, uh, that, that, that can work. You just have to think out of the box, you know, put on that your, your, your cover all of, of entrepreneurship. You know, I always tell people, I don't, I don't shy away from telling people that you have to be an entrepreneur. You, you, you don't have to be, but you have to explore those, those uh, opportunities and see if things will come because we are living in a world of uncertainty. Nothing is certain. We are not very sure. But if you are fearful, if you don't have that mental skill to, or to, to adapt yourself to the situation you have at the moment and to overcome the inertia and stop complaining and start working towards what you want, uh, many people that complain that they, that they do not have um, the way we to do this. If you look at the phone they are using, it's, it's heavier than the phone of the MD of some, of, of some companies. You know, that has to do with interest. You know, what are your interests? And how are you able to focus on that interest and, and make sure that you use what you have to get what you need? Okay, thank you so much, sir, for, for that lovely answer. We really appreciate you. Um, on behalf of the young engineers, I would love to ask them a question, and that is in the area of mentorship. So as the branch to beat NSC Kedja branch has um, a mentorship scheme called the um, NSC Kedja branch at the Gun Ariwa um, mentorship scheme, which is called NIBAMS for short, um, a very rich, mentorship program that helps to link young engineers with senior engineers who serve as their mentors. A good number of them are here. And that is one of the reasons why NSC Kedja branch remains the branch to beat. Um, but I would love you to say something, sir, in the aspect of mentorship. How, where, how best do you think young engineers can learn, can link up with senior engineers, especially those who they look up to but might not necessarily have access to? And also for those who they have access to, what are the best ways for them to learn from senior engineers? Because sometimes we have cases where young engineers are, are linked with their mentors, but they don't even know how to go about it in the first place. Uh, personally, I know mentorship, uh, the, link, the relationship between a mentor and a mentee should be two-way, but many young engineers don't even know how to go about it. Sometimes they are even um, presented with this, um, an opportunity for them to meet their mentor, but they don't even know how to, to start so please, sir, would you, um, based on your experience, can you guide the young engineers on how best you think they could um, gain from mentorship programs like that of um, NSC Kedja Branch or even direct mentorship um, opportunities they might get? Thank you, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, I'm happy you use the word that uh, mentor-mentee relationship is a, you know, it's a two-way traffic. You know, um, most of the time we make mistakes that. Uh, we should always go and take from our mentors. You know, that, that is one thing that it's, a, it's, a, it's something that we want to always go to our mentor and take from them. One thing you need to appreciate is this, is that for you to be able to, for you to be able to gain the attention of somebody who is very, very busy, you know, don't forget that these mentors 
you see them as mentors because they are they are effective in their field, and they, most of them are family members and all the rest, and uh, they are busy. But how do you now attract them, their attention to yourself? How do you how do you attract them to, to your shelf and, and make sure that uh, and make sure that so there are some strategies that, that can be used. You know, um, if your if your mentor. First of all, you have to know about your mentor very well. You have to know who is he. You have to know, have some data about the person, what the person likes, what the person does not like, you know, by, by, by way of research. And then things like your mentor's birthday. And then you, 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 you go there with, see, these are not things that are going to be taught in schools, but it, 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 it's a soft skill. It's a soft skill of, uh, that, that, that lies under, uh, is it, is it empathy now? Uh, no, not empathy, but you, you put yourself in somebody's shoe. That's number one. You empathize, you know, the person is busy. That's basically so you don't get upset where you don't have the attention. And now you want to think, of, how can I have this, this much attention? You present a <laughs> gift. Buy a gift, buy a pen, buy whatever, and give to your... There are, there are things that they will see in their office, you know, on their table, that to bring that reflection back to you, you understand? So you don't always expect to take from your mentors, also give them gifts, buy gifts for your mentors. These are human beings, you understand? And they will appreciate you. And that your gift may be so, so small, uh, so insignificant to you, but means a lot to your mentor. So identify what your mentor needs, and that is within your budget, buy them, and give it to your mentor. Let your mentor have that magnetic relationship between you and him. And make sure, and because it, it, it's a collaborative work that you are going to do. This person is coming to give unto you a wealth of experience over years that took him a lot of like 20 years, 30 years experience. He's going to be pouring it to you, you know? And, it's, and it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not billing you, it's not giving you an invoice at the end of the day for using his time. But it should be good as human beings. You no, know, we are human beings. So we have to we have to jettison that technical skill, uh, not totally, but we have to look in, in 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 a way of how we have this interpersonal relationship with people. Interpersonal relation with people is a soft skill, and that is what we are talking about. You know, you want to learn from your mentor. You have to be able to give to your mentor. Do not always go with the mindset that you want to take from them. They will run away from you because you are always coming not to add value to them. So add value to your mentor. Also, if you have a certain skill, you know, graphic design skill, you want to create website, or you can do website creation, you can, you can do something, look at your, your mentor's organization. If the company's website is not good enough, and you think you have a value that you can add in that, in that regard, let it be a two-way traffic. Always come to your mentor with a solution to their problem. Just treat them, treat them like a customer, like, like you are treating a customer in the, in, in the marketplace. You want to come with, a, with an innovative idea to get your customer's money, your, your customer's attention to buy from you and not others. You have to be able to treat your, 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 your mentor the same way. How, why should your mentor focus on you and not several other people that are trying to gain his attention? You understand? So that is, that is one thing I'll say. Um, you know, buy them gift, come and add value to them. Look at what they need. Look at their organization, their, their company. Come with something. See, everybody wants to work with smart people. I want to work with somebody that is smart. I don't want to work with a dummy that is just coming to, 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 for me to deposit, open his brain and deposit some things in it. I want to see results of what I've told you before. And then feedback is very important. When, you're, when you're, your mentor uh, has a session with you, even if they don't tell you that you, you should come and give them a feedback, you must have it behind you that you must give feedback. You know, write letters, write emails, contact them. If you cannot speak with them on phone because of their busy schedule, write letters. Thank them for their for their for their support and tell them the status of their of their advice, the impact it has on you, and what you've been able to do with your advice and uh, the status, your status at the moment and what you are planning to do in future. Feedback is very important. It, it elates the ego. 
hey, it lets the hair go of your of, of your of your of your of your mentor because now he's seeing that his output is generating his input in you is generating an output, you know, that is desirable, that is productive. So he wants to be able to share, even, even, you, even if, if, if you come back to your mentor, for instance, and your mentor is a speaker in an event, he can use your, that's your narration, that storytelling, you know, is very important. So that's, what, that, that's another soft skill that we need to develop. We need to be able to tell stories, you know, I, I love, storytelling because i know that i do speaking engagements and uh, it's a tool within my within my within my toolbox that i preserve with is so much integrity so you have to be able to tell stories give them feedback go and add value to them it's a two-way traffic buy them gifts you understand attend their functions you know if you have the time to attend their functions you know be part of them let them see you as an asset and not a liability Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate you. While you were speaking, one of our mentors at the branch, a very senior engineer and the mother of the young engineer, Tunuke Olabi, who happens to be the technical secretary of the branch, just joined that's me. My, Thank you so my, much, Ma. That's my dear sister. You. Thank you for joining us, Ma. We appreciate you. Uh, we also have the coordinator of the Young Engineers Future Leaders Committee of the NSC. She's online engineer, Uchechi Dosuam, FNSC. At this point, I would love to call on her to give her contribution. I also speak more on the area of mentorship. Thank you so much, Ma. Uh, thank you very much. Please, permission not to have my video on. I just want to make sure my data works well for the audio. Thank you once again. It's It's been a very, very interesting, I'm, I'm really looking forward to having the full presentation so that I can look at this again. All right, and um, just in the area of um, mentorship, permit me to just add that the mentee should actually have an agenda when attending those sessions. What do you want out of that particular session? Don't just go blank expecting that the mentor would know what it is that you want at that moment. Have an agenda. Go for it. And then, you know, see yourself. It's not like you will really share the agenda. But you have a goal for each of those meetings. And then don't make it too long. The, the mentor is very, very busy. So make good use of all the time. And, of course, learn to appreciate. It can be intangible, too. Thank you. You know, and then excel so that the mentor sees that his time or her time is not wasted. Okay, that's a side. Then in 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 another angle, I would like us to think, you know, for for the young engineers. Some of us, our audio is is noisy anyway, please. But for the young engineers, I, I would like to appeal to us all the question. How many of us actually have a personal development plan? You know, and, and that's what hinders us. I, I like the fact about the technical skills, the soft skills, and the meta skills. They are very, very critical and very important. How many of us really have a personal development plan? You know, at a point, I work for the government. I'm a civil servant, right? And we have 35 years, basically. And so I drafted a plan for myself on the skills I needed to acquire at certain, certain stages of my career you know that that actually gives you a focus that gives you a plan that gives you a purpose for each day you wake up so i'd like to encourage or challenge the young engineers go and draft a personal development plan for yourself it mustn't be very exotic it mustn't be out of the blues you know make it simple yeah but know that you're achieving something now this presentation, go back. And there are lots of courses online that are free. Free. Really very yeah, free. Yeah. All it will cost you is your of, data. A lot, of courses, yeah. a lot. It's just your data. You know, so go in there, do more work on the soft skills, do more work on the meta skills. For me, I've always been a, a proponent of the fact that a lot of us engineers are C 
sitting on half a leg of stool. You know, we're so good technically, but we, we are poor so in the soft skills, we are poor in leadership skills, in people skills, and now the meta skills, you know, the inertia to stand and start. You know, so I would like to encourage us, go online, get these free courses. It, it will do you a world of good and build yourself. But most importantly, have a personal development plan. In the next five years, what skills do you need? So, you know, using even what our facilitator has given us this evening, go back and make a plan. Okay, what are the technical skills I need to have? What are the soft skills I need? The meta skills, you know, how do I build myself up? Because the truth is that nobody can push you further than you want to go. So you have to be your own push, really. So stop looking to someone else to do the push for you. You need to have your own push. So that's just, I don't want to take a lot of our time, but it's been very interesting. But please go and design or develop a personal development plan. Have one for yourself. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. I also, I also want to add that even the, the, that, uh, that uh, uh, initial thinking, that initial step to even know that you need a personal development plan is a meta skill himself because you are trying to overcome an inertia. You are trying to, you know, see beyond now and see into the future and how you are going to to be able to adapt you know your your skill your your persona to that future of work you know we you, as 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 you said you know you want to do uh, the civil service and probably you want to uh, establish a business a small business of your of your own because you still have to continue paying the bills uh but you know, you, you you need people. You need to work around people. You need to bring that your technical skills uh, on board. And uh, beyond that, you know, that ability to even sit down in the first instance, to draw up that plan for yourself, that personal development goal, you know, for yourself, is also a meta skill that uh, we need to take care of, you know. Thank you very much for your contribution. I appreciate you. Okay. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Uh, at this point, we would also want to have a very senior engineer of ours, one of our mothers at the branch, the very first female agricultural engineer in Nigeria. By God's grace, on the 21st of July, she will be in the arena, a program that um, usually hosts senior engineers who come to share their experiences and how they've been able to get to the peak of their career. I think at this point, it would also be good for us to tap from her just before uh, we get her in the arena on the 21st of July. So our Momima, Engineer Nimot, I'm sorry, Engineer Idiot Amos FNSIMA. Thank you so there. much. Thank you, thank you so much. Don't mind if I'm panting because I'm doing my evening work. Permit me to just be like that. I want to appreciate the speaker for waking up a lot of uh, issues that is really challenging the un unemployability of our young engineers. Uh, and I think with this lecture, a lot of us will go back and look at where we are missing some things. And just like the, just like the last speaker said, uh, we are very good technically. Uh, with the other skills we are, we are found wanting. And I think and th those are the skills that will give us jobs. The skills that will give our jobs are, are those ones that we need to work on. I want to commend the speaker, and I believe that uh, this topic will be discussed exhaustively after this lecture amongst the young engineers. We can have a, a forum that all of us can sit down and chit chat one on one and look at the issues that has been raised in this lecture. Once again, thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, for giving us this wonderful experience of yours. We really appreciate you. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, our mommy. We really appreciate you. Um, it's just like you spoke our minds. By God's grace, we'll be having the Young Engineers Day at the upcoming NSC Keja Branch um, Engineering Week. We hope to have a panel session during the Young Engineers Day, where we'll be having the likes of um, engineer Uchechu Doswam as one of the panelists. Uh, so by God's grace, we'll be discussing um, topics around this on that day. Thank you so much for that.
At this point, I think it would be wise to also um, give Gina Atunuke Olabi, FNI Triple E, the opportunity to speak. She is the chairman of the NSC Kedja branch um, engineering week 2022. So it would be good to have her speak more to it and tell us more about the upcoming events during the week. Thank you, Ma. The floor is yours. Oh, thank you, Engineer Mizel. Uh, first of all, I would like to appreciate the facilitator of today. Um, thank you. Our engineer is my brother, he's a friend, he's a family. We've been together for years now. Thank you so much, sir, for coming and to, for your love for these young engineers. We have always been so passionate with whatever they do, and we appreciate you for that, sir. Uh, for the engineering week, it will start on you know, the 15th of August, and it will end on the 19th. But the fourth day of it, uh, in this, as we made for all our young engineers in the country, and they have a lot of programs that they would like to do on that day, is our engineering week. And um, the good thing is having the elders to come around and also the younger ones make the, um, the engineering profession to be very vibrant and to be healthy. So with that, we have given um, the young engineers a whole day to plan for that day. And the topic for the engineering week is going to, uh, the topic for the engineering week, sorry, I'm trying to check if it's, because it's so long. So the topic for the engineering week is taking responsibility for Nigeria transformation, the imperative for engineers. The first day is going to be the press conference and um, uh, we're going to also have a sensitization program in collaboration with the Ministry of Physical uh, Planning and the second day, we're also using that day to honor one of our past presidents, Engineer Law Femi. So his, his own colloquium, first engineer, engineer Ademola Isaac Olon Femi colloquium on sustainable and resilient engineering infrastructure. And the thing for this year's own is power and energy insufficiency in Nigeria, the way forward. We'll be having that at uh, uh, Victoria Island NSC headquarters. Then the third day is for our headers, all the headers in the house, all the headers in engineering. They come together, they brainstorm, they work, they do a kind of game. They also added this to a waste. Hello, Ma. Are you still with us? I assume she has an issue with her network. Her mic is still on. Hello, Engineer Tunikema. Are you still with us? Okay, we lost her. While we are waiting for her to come back. Um, the we are pleased. The next talk. So, on Friday, we'll be having a dinner. So, all the engineers in the country, even in the, in the state, we welcome you to. 2022 engineering week for NSC Kaja branch. Once again, we appreciate you, sir, for coming for the lecture you have given to these young engineers. And I know it will, it's been very impactful and I know they'll surely gain from it. So every year we'll be holding this as well. Thank you once again, all the participants, our mommy, all the mommies in the house, the deputy president. Thank you so much, ma, for your time. Thank you so much, Ma. We really appreciate you. You have always been there for the young engineers, and you have been mentoring us in so many ways, opening doors for us as young people to grow. We really appreciate you. Only God uh, can bless you. At this point, we, also, um, we are pleased to have the Vice President of the NSC, the Vice President of the NSC, Engineer China Okoli, FNSC, as well as a National ESCO member, Engineer, Engineer Dr. Abdul Rashid Babalola, FNSC. I would love to have them speak. I would love to start with the Vice President, Engineer Okoli, FNSC, sir. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, yes, thank you, the Messiah of, uh, of NSC. I, I want to, first of all, thank God Almighty who has made this day possible for us to share knowledge and the knowledge we have shared so far has been very impactful and very useful. 
I want to thank the deputy president, the Amazon herself. We call her the Amazon, the stuff of all first for her leadership, mentorship. In fact, all the qualities because as you see how she's not resting, always reminding every everybody around her, like the mother hen does to the children. Do this, do that. I am one of the beneficiaries of all this reminder because she prompted me this evening that look, this uh, program is going on. And I promised her a return. I want to thank the, all the mothers in the house for always being there for the young ones. I want to thank the young ones who are always eager to learn. The difference between you and us, the elderly ones, is just the age difference. You see yourself today, at 15, 20 years to your age, you will be, you will be like us. And if you don't prepare, you are pushed off from today, from even yesterday, you will see that you will be in a panic mode. You will start panicking when the time starts coming. I have about two years to leave civil service. When I speak with, with most of my friends who we are due to retire at the same time, what is our worry? Our worry is always, oh, I will retire. What am I going to do in retirement? How will life treat me? Sickness, guilt, uh, social uh, demands from me, and all those things. So when you sit, when you sit down and do an audit of yourself, what you are going to be in the future, like uh, the last speaker who said that uh, you should prepare. You should do a, a PDP, personal development plan of yourself. If you have not done it yet today, please start now to do it because there is no time. You will, you will find yourself being forced in a corner. So having said this, my advice to the young ones, just look at your father. Can you imagine what your father and your mother looked like from years ago? Ask, ask the number of years you are now to what they are, you will look like them. And if they have not prepared well to have you as their son or their daughter to be where you are today, not to think that, you, that they will be looking at themselves as that they have failed. So you too, Start today to plan yourself. Have your personal development plan. Read books. For me, the best books I like to read in this world are autobiographies of great men. Of course, poor men don't write autobiographies. It is the great men that put down their life history, their life journey. And when you get to read their life journey, you will see that they were like one of us. Nelson Mandela was once a toddler. Five years, ten years, twenty years, and he entered prison and spent the bulk of his youthful life, twenty-seven years in prison. But that didn't deter him. While in prison, he prepared himself. And so, that is the life of every person. Look at uh, Dr. Nanda Zikiwa. Look at Shifabu uh, Kadri uh, Awolowo. Look at Tero uh, Sadwana. Uh, All of them are ones like us. So please try to evaluate yourself and give yourself a plan. Don't be too hard on yourself. Don't judge yourself as if you are a failure. You are not a failure. And don't surround yourself with people who always uh, uh, tell you that you are nothing. Surround yourself with people who will always encourage you with words of advice. Oh, you can do it. Okay, do it this way, do it that way. It's not the end of life. Then you will see that one day, you will be what you want to do. I want to thank every person, the deputy president, uh, our mothers in the house, 
and uh, the, our resource person for today. He said, that Brian, I bought my heart for you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate you. Um, we also have engineer Dr. Abdul Rashid Abalola, FNSC, an ESCO member of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Please, sir, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, let me start by thanking four people on this floor this evening. The first person I'd like to thank and appreciate is good work. Is an uh, engineer Ayodele on Navanjo MNSC. Indeed, Ayodele, the, thank you, sir. Ayodele. Ayode G, yes, yes. The, on this uh, very insightful topic. I would also like to thank uh, the anchor and indeed the last speaker, engineer Messiah Amen, for the coordination. And of course, for doing a great work to ensure our young engineers head are together. I also want to thank the chairman of the branch, Engineer Tosio Gumola, for accepting to be a father and providing this opportunity of, pla of this platform for this interaction to be taking place today. And indeed, our mother, the first woman, deputy, female deputy president of the society the Great Society of Engineers, our own mother, and Amazon engineer Margaret Gutella, who created awareness for today's program. And not only today's program, for all the young engineers program, he always ensure it is well attended so that these young engineers could have different interaction and could have different experience for adult engineers, senior engineers. So I want to thank these four great people and not limited to them, all people that are all participants here, in, uh, and also uh, my first president who has spoken just before me. Um, I'm going to share two experiences in a very short while. The first experience I'd like to share is the one that I just learned, I learned just a couple of days ago in Sierra Leone about the Young Engineers Forum. What I learned is their involvement in practical uh, in skills development and showcasing it publicly, even during the conference, the Mother Body Conference. I was privileged to see that the, uh, the Mother Body gave them slots to make presentations of skills that are, for example, uh, they, uh, one of them developed a class attendant using thumb printing and came to show us the way the program, he wrote the program and he, had, he applied it. And we all saw it work. He won also display a smart farm where just on the control of his asset, he's able to wait uh, to irrigate uh, agricultural products. So, and so on and so forth. Now, what I also saw they do is that they are in collaboration strongly with the mother body. They are also in collaboration with industry stroke and academic. They serve as interface. They make sure when the, 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 the industry requirement of an academics, I mean, of, of their graduating students is not lacking. They brought problem, they bring problem from the industry to students to solve. Thereby, it is the industry that go around looking for students for internship, not the way it is here in Nigeria, where we have to apply. And mostly the industry, the industry thought they are doing favor to these students by accepting them to come and have experience. Even when they know they will contribute a lot into their system. Also, they collaborated with their diaspora engineers uh, who in turn ensure they have sponsorship, scholarship from some greater and developed institutions. 
thereby ensuring that the skills area is not lacking. So this was what impressed me a lot. And I call attention of their president, the young engineers uh, forum president there. And uh, I was also privileged to present a paper on our behalf. And this person wants the same collaboration with Nigerian young engineers, of which I promise him when I get to Nigeria. So I'm privileged this evening to be part of this program whereby I'm talking to our young engineers. Uh, I'm going to give you a contact. Uh, I'm going to give uh, Engineer Hammer a contact after this show. He has to, you give me a call. I'm going to give you a contact so that you could work together. Even since the world is a global village, you will inter I mean, discuss your challenges in terms of uh, skills development. They will discuss there. Uh, of course, you will attend their conference and uh, they will also attend your conference. I think that is the way I want it to go. Uh, we are from the same continent. Let me now make the lecture given to uh, of today's topic, uh, where he said that most times in schools, some skills are not taught. And that reminds me of one of the novels I read in the past that said, what a father will not give to anybody except his child. Institutions will not teach you how to make money. They will only teach you how to develop knowledge on, uh, on one aspect that you came to learn. We are engineers and problem solver. They will only tell you the general design and other areas that it will be useful for you to implement and come up with uh, problem solving. But they will not give you some innovations that will create chances of making money for you. It's you that must develop it. And in that regard, I want to share my personal experience with my paint factory. When I started to develop paint, I, <coughs> when I was developing my formulation, I started, I started uh, the simpler ones, which is the emotion. I follow with the uh, test codes. When it comes to the, uh, of course I was getting it because my target was to be on the best quality. Uh, my name, I always believe, is better than any money. So if I must produce anything, I must get the standard, irrespective of the denier I may have get it from people that I approach to teach me one or another. You will never, nobody will teach you. You must not relax. You must not be discouraged. You must fall ahead. Now, those one go. So a company called Critao, I approach them that I could give them gloss, uh, primer, uh, of course, they are still industry. They use primer. This primer is what uh, is uh, put a bit rub on the surface of the metal before sold out. After after which the weaver uh, purchases it will now go and put the finishing uh, gloss or thereabout. So this primer is uh, a special primer. The color is orange. We call it orange primer. We all know even red oxide is primer, but. Getting this color and having the quality of primer is an acquired task. It is only one company in Lagos that give them. And since it costs them a lot to order, place their order from Lagos in Tokaduna, so they are looking for uh, a local producer, which I fit into. Uh, I must quickly tell you, it was not easy. There are so many production that I do that they have to call me to take back. I will produce some, the following day, it will be as uh, thick as a rock. It could not come out of uh, the uh, container. So on and so on. I keep making research, and they never rejected it. They always say, my friend, come and carry this thing. I become, instead of me to become ashamed, I start myself that I must get it. I keep doing it. I, I travel to places to get information, but they will always deny me or do that. I start experimenting. I am a chemical engineer, so I look for you cannot get the correct formulation on the net. Some of you think the formulation we release on the net will give you perfect, perfect product. It will not. We always keep uh, the best to assess. So uh, very young uh, engineers in this forum, I want to congratulate you. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the facilitator or the lecturer of today has given you keys, keys to life. He has given you what a father cannot give anybody except his child. 
So I follow this lecture through very well, and I discover that you have not, nothing is left unturned if you make use of this lecture of today. So I, I behold, I become the best producer of orange primer, and because the best who they will be looking for. Most times when I am not around, probably I travel somewhere, they will send money to my account to motivate me to return and produce primer for you. Nobody ever, they will never love any other person's primer again. And what do I get in return? I made a lot of money producing primer. Not until when uh, modern meta, I mean, uh, Windows and billion Windows came on board, and a lot of people were preferring all that to uh, distill windows and doors that uh, frame and so on and so forth. And that was what was making their market uh, 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 out of, uh, you know, fashion. So that was when uh, the market in that regard for my own paint uh, with them starts from this. So what I'm trying to tell us this evening is that uh, you have to persevere. You must continue. You must make trial. Experiments cost you a lot of money, but don't give up. At the end of the day, you are going to, as you succeed, you make all those bonus. Uh, I think that is uh, the experience I'd like to share with you, very young and my uh, distinguished uh, colleagues. Uh, uh, please take that uh, as my uh, small contribution uh, to this uh, gathering, to this evening. Thank you once again. Thank you, my Deputy President. Uh, thank you all, and God bless you all. Wow, thank you so much, sir. It's always a pleasure having you. I think this is the second event of um, the Fun NSE Keja branch, which you are um, joining us for. And it's always an amazing opportunity to have you on board. I'm so pleased to see that once again, NSE Keja branch, the branch to beat is um, taking the lead on this. I'll be calling you immediately after this, um, this event, sir, to get the contact you promised to share with us. As a matter of fact, we learned um, networking from our mother, engineer Margaret Oguntala, FNSC, Deputy President of the Nigeria Society of Engineers. So it's always a pleasure for us to network with others. Thank you so much, sir, for that. Um, in line with, with, um, with this, the Nigeria Society of Engineers, Young Engineers Future um, Leaders Committee is organizing a CPD event, which will be holding on, on the 11th on the 23rd of um, July, 2022, which will be on a Saturday by 11 a.m. And the team is Employability 101. The speaker will be Yewande Jinadu, a senior HR a professional and convener of employability fitness program. I urge all young engineers and others who are here. The young engineers of NSC Gadget Branch will definitely be online. So for, for those who are here, I could see um, young engineers from um, um, Portacourt branch. Solomon Godi, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And others from other states, I urge you all to join and benefit from that event. At this point, I think we've had um, so much to gain from and we've learned yeah, a lot but, today. Uh, Engineer Messiah, I just want to also comment our last speaker before you, uh, okay. the doctor, for uh, his uh, story. I followed it very well. Uh, his uh, story is a lesson of, uh, ent of entrepreneurial venture. He mentioned uh, the story of, uh, of, his, of, of his resiliency, you know, his experimentation and, and, and rejection and failures, and which did not deter him <clears throat> from forging ahead. And you know, because he, he asked a focus and he, he, you know, he focused his energy onto that venture. And also uh, the, um, the, 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 the story of uh, adaptability and change that we mentioned in the during the course of this of this uh, of this uh, lecture that change will come you know change would, is a disruption innovation is a disruption he mentioned that he used to make a lot of money from from primer making primer but ton of event came and then people preferred anodized aluminium uh, to having to paint because now people are going to be more productive they're going to uh, uh, save a lot of money on 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 time and on cost and and also on, on on delivery dates you know for a particular project going the route of the anodized aluminium and that changes its fortune you know but that is that is just a lesson that we have to learn here 
that apart from our technical skills, which helped him, which was the, 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 uh, the ability to put those things on board, to create those formula for the paint, and then uh, uh, that stops there. Then he begins to have his entrepreneurial venture, you know, to make sales, marketing, and all that, and then his resiliency, and then his adaptability to change. These are all fantastic stories that uh, we cannot stop talking about when we want to prepare our young ones for the future of work. You know, that uh, the future of work is, is unstable. The future of work is not, it's not linear. It's not, uh, it's not something that you can, you can solve with algorithm, uh, but uh, you just have to come to terms with reality. And then uh, if you're able to come to terms with reality, you find that things will be easier. It's not, this will not be perfect. It's not be a wrong, it's, it's not be a smooth ride, but I mean, you will, you'll be able to get your destination um, with, uh, with uh, uh, a mindset that you are going to grow. Yeah, that's just it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. It's almost like every minute you say something, I get to tap ball. And um, this event shouldn't end. But unfortunately, whatever has a beginning must have an end. Yes. Thank sir. you so much, sir. We really appreciate you. I know we've taken so much of your time. But due to your love and passion for the young ones, you are still here with us. Thank you so much, sir. I also appreciate every senior engineer who has stayed online with us to this very moment. Your time is not uh, taken for granted. Thank you so much. We also have engineer Nimot Muili, um, the treasurer of NSC Keja branch, who is also going to be one of our panelists during our upcoming panel session at the Young Engineers Day. I think we'd love to have her say a word or two before we present the certificate. Engineer Nimot, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Engineer Lizaya. And uh, thank you very much, Engineer Yodiji. I mean, You're I welcome. have really benefited from this. I seek our indulgence, especially our senior engineers, to stand on the already well established protocol because of time. We've actually overshoot the runway. So I really value, value everybody's contribution and time. <laughs> what I don't want to quickly contribute that I want from in terms of uh, mentoring is uh, reverse mentoring. Sometimes we don't have control. Maybe some of us that enrolled in a structured mentoring program, we don't have control over the mentor that will be assigned to us. And eventually when we enter the program, we don't want to back out because we want to continue with the organization. Let's say Kedja branch, for instance, we want to continue with the Kedja branch, but we don't actually like, like in quotes, maybe um, the mentor that was assigned to us uh, is not someone that we think we can work with. So for some of those instances, some of the things that have actually worked for me is a kind of reverse mentoring. So I help the mentor to develop the skills that I think they should have. And even if it's a kind of mentoring program that you, you actually enroll it in, I think we should go into mentoring program like a kind of a beneficial relationship, not always what, what do you think I should do? I mean, you are asking your mentor at the point, it will be, become boring. So you should go with the mindset that I'm going to also mentor this person. And one way that I've learned that you can do is actually doing a SWOT analysis of your mentor. Identify their strengths, identify their weakness, opportunity with them, and also maybe not threats, but the things that is not really working for them that might shake either their business or their personal um, employment. So instead of you pointing it out that, my, I think you don't know how to manage your time very well because each time you have appointment, you're always coming late. You can pick up a book and read about time management or take a course. Like you can check on LinkedIn about time management, apply it to yourself. And when you are now discussing with them, you can say, oh, this is what I've done in the last few weeks to enable me improve on my time management. So that we're actually doing a reverse mentoring because you've actually read the book for them and you're also helping them to improve. Apart from a very senior person in the bank who said that he sometimes follow people that she doesn't want to be like and also give them gifts because they are making her see what she should not be like. And one of our mentors have mentioned it that um, in terms of uh, some, some of them are thinking, what would they do when they retire? So we're not too young to start looking at people like that. 
when he retired, what is this person doing? And that's why we see some of us, we volunteer so that at our free time, we are giving back. And we also plan able to plan into our maybe old age or retirement or something. We're able to fit into that time. And a lot have been said about our Irelu, how she's been mentoring us and many of us like that. So we should go with the mindset of, I'm also going to give, I'm going to help this person to be better. And... <laughs> okay, I think that's what that is. Uh, nice. So I think that's what I just want to emphasize. Once again, I thank everyone. Uh, from the young enough thing that put this together, I've really benefited as a as a person as well. Like many of us have said, so I wish us well in the next endeavor. Thank you very much, Ichia and Onobanjo, once again, and thank you everyone. Okay, okay. thank you so much, Ma. I appreciate you for being there for us. Yeah, and thank welcome you. Thank to. You. Thank you so much for that. Uh... For that uh, insight, you know, I have to quickly jot, jot something down when you said reverse mentoring. That is a very powerful phrase. And I, it's in my notes. And I will, I'm sure that it's going to be very useful for me one day that you have to do reverse mentoring. Look for their strengths, their weaknesses, and see how you can give back to them. And that is all about adding value. You know, you're, you're let it be mutually uh, beneficial, you know, two-way traffic. Add value to your mentor and let your mentor add value you, and so that you're going to create time for you uh, in this busy schedule. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. And at this time, I need to I need to go now because I'm getting prepared to go somewhere else. Uh, you just see me. You may see me that I disappear. No, sir. Uh, don't don't disappear. You know. We'll be presenting your certificate now. Henry, oh, okay. kindly share his certificate, please, while I call upon our mommy, the deputy president, ma to kindly present the certificate to our guest speaker, engineer, ODG, Onabanjo, MNSC. Thank you so much, sir. Come on, the floor is yours. Henry, kindly share yeah, this. Uh, I'm here. Right. <clears throat> Thank you, ma. Yes. Um, well, a lot has been said. The comments, the questions, and they have all added to, uh, they have all added to the event and um, given it greater value than when we started. And... Um, I took a lot of notes myself. Sorry, mommy. And, yes. Harry is sharing the wrong certificate. Harry, yes, share, I've seen it. I'm not going to read it. Copy. Can yeah. you share the signed copy, please? So okay, I took ahead, a lot of notes myself, took photographs, screenshots, you know, that I can go back to later to also study. And uh, I, I think the certificate is just a token, just something for by which Engineer Nobanjo would uh, remember today. What he has given us is a lot more than we can reward him for. So um, I have the pleasure and the singular honor of doing this uh, on behalf of the Young Engineers Forum of Nigeria, IEFON, the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Ikeja branch, a branch which continually builds a viable engineering culture. I have the pleasure of presenting this certificate to engineer Ayoideji Onobanjo for being a guest speaker and a fantastic one too at the Efon Ikeja branch World Youth Skills Day event. Congratulations, sir. And um, this lecture, engineer Edo Sonwa, I hope you are still here. We need to- Yes, I am, ma. Yes, we need to escalate this. We need to take it to a broader space. So you may want okay, to ma. take his details from Ame and then contact him and then get him to also do something similar with the national body of the Young Engineers Forum. Thank you very much. All right, my noted. Thank you very much for this uh, for this gesture. I, I really appreciate it. I didn't even know that something like this would be coming. Um, I'm going to I'm going to download this. I'm going to frame it. I'm going to put it in my in my room so that uh, I have that sense of belonging to where I I, I really belong. In Lela for senior for you know the people say that uh, when you when you go on a on, on, on a sojourn you always want to go back home one day. I really appreciate the Kenya branch as uh, as a place to identify with, and I thank you so much for this uh, for this gesture. 
it's well, well, I really appreciate it. On behalf of myself and my family, I really appreciate this uh, presentation. Thank you. God bless everyone. Thank you so much, sir. You, you don't need to stress yourself downloading, sir. As our guest speaker, I would send it personally to you. Thank you so much, sir. All right, all right, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate you. Okay, so at, at this point, the floor is open for interaction. As um, young engineers, we've learned networking. So this is a very good opportunity for young engineers to also network. Our senior engineers are here. While we were speaking, um, the assistant coordinator of the Young Engineer Future Leaders Committee joined a, a resource person, one who has been there for young engineers in many ways, engineer Sanzeo Morozo. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Thank you very much. Good evening, all. Good evening, my deputy president and my coordinator. Congratulations, uh, year four on the Kedja chapter. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate you. So at this point, um, young engineers, the floor is open. To see many of you who couldn't speak. Yeah, uh, it's time to interact. Olawale Awonuga, I can see you here. Solomon Godi, all the way from Portacourt branch. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. Can yeah. Solomon tell us what is going on in Port Harcourt? What are they doing? I mean, in terms, uh, in terms of things like this, how did they celebrate the Youth Skills Day or how do they plan to celebrate it? Solomon, is he still here? Um, yes, I'm with you, ma. Yes. Um, nothing much. Uh, we'll be having uh, our NSC Packard branch golden the activity coming up by December 3rd, likely 3rd or thereabouts. And also the year fund Packard branch plan to fix its workshop on that same date with the NSC branch. That will be a very nice uh, activity. So when I saw the opportunity to join this, uh, meeting i was very very happy yeah so i happen to be there thank you very much i learned a lot and um, i'm going for an interview tomorrow i believe this uh, uh meeting also enlightened me on what it was my... it was it was meant for you yes yes very, very much for me <laughs> <laughs> thank you very very much okay thank you so much ma glory is she there? Gloria, Gloria. Okeu. Okay. Yes. One of Gloria, the other Gloria, my you go. <laughs> Gloria, are you here? I saw her sometime. Yeah, yeah, she's still online. Maybe she just um okay. her Where is our chairman? I think um he's unavailable at the moment due to okay. And I, I need to call him and thank him for this platform. He has done a lot to um, give um, a very suitable platform to Yefon to thrive in the branch. Exactly. I would, I dare say that he has done more than his predecessors, including me, particularly <laughs> me too, in that regard. So we need to thank him especially for this. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, you guys are well very prepared to take over. I'm happy about that. Right, that's good. We are talking for you. Good evening, ma'am. Good, Good evening, evening, my grand Ah. Good evening, my deputy president, man. Mr. Chairman, sir. <laughs> man, how are you? How are you? Like? I was just thanking you. I was just sending appreciations to you. I you chose know? to be a ghost, ghost attendant. Yeah. Uh, ghost so you wanted to catch us uh, gossiping <laughs> you. you know? A great, Good evening, a great our program indeed. Good evening, <laughs> our messiah. And uh, good evening to so everybody much, on the call. Hello, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Chairman, uh, that, that has only been through your good support. Evening, sir. And the support of everybody. Good evening, all. I, I just said here, I'm sure, I don't know if you heard, that you have taken the earphone to a much greater height than any of we, your predecessors. And uh, it's very, <laughs> very commendable. You are, you are, thank, you are preparing you so them, much, and man. I see them almost ready, if not ready, to take over. And, and that's something commendable because we need to continually prepare the youth to take over. Like I always tell, like I say okay, to them all the time, the youth 
uh, the future, and the future is now. Exactly. So I'm very happy with what is happening in Asia. Thank and you so are, very much, man. I'm glad that uh, Engineer Desonwa is here. So she's um, she knows what to take to the other branches. <laughs> Thanks well, so much for the I know, words, seriously. Good evening, sir. Well done, madam. My notes uh, are full. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> and really good to know. It's the least we can do. And I think the DP just took it out of my mouth. What I had wanted to say is the future is now. So yes. if you say the youth are the leaders of tomorrow, tomorrow already started yesterday, really. Mm -hmm. So the least we can do is just to continue to give the required support yeah. in every way. And just like uh, DP also said, that if she can say they are almost ready. So indeed, uh, we cannot get to a point that we would say they are ready until they fully take over. Sure. So, and that is why we continue also to appreciate the support of the deputy president. And uh, of course, EFON can indeed be very hopeful that the future for them in the NSC is really, really bright. That will tell you what is in the option by the time the DP becomes president anyway. So, and you know, that continues to gladden our hearts that uh, the future of the NSC cannot be brighter than this. We can be rest assured that we are, we will be in the right hands, you know, and uh, we will be uh, rest assured that whatever it is that we are building now, we have more than capable hands to build upon the foundations and of course take the society to greater heights. Like I've always said, uh, NSC is not really there. We thank God for the wins of the past few months, past few years. But one, one key example I continue to give was when you know, the likes of the founders of Twitter, founders of Facebook came to Nigeria. You know, they, they visited several other places, but they never visited the NSC. And that, that, that spoke a lot of volume for me because NSC remains the rallying point of everything engineering and technology based in Nigeria. So, and that is part of what should continue to drive us all that we must take our rightful place. And there is nobody that is, I mean, no organization, by the time I say nobody, not an individual, but no organization within the structure of the NSC fits more to actually undertake this than year form. And you know, th that's part of what is actually driving us all to create the space for them. So I'm so happy. I mean, I've actually been around for some time, but I just felt that, okay, let me just uh, be an observer as it were. Mm -hmm. And particularly that I have my leaders also. I had when Dr. Abirashid was speaking, and of course having our indefatigable deputy president on the call. So great one, Messiah. Thank you, and my leader, sir. Great one for- Great, great one uh, indeed, as always. As, as always. And of course, like we always say, greater days are ahead. We must not just relent, we must not get tired. And like we always say, to whom much is given much more. So every day we can only compare ourselves with what the best of yesterday. And then we continue to, you know, set new uh, places and, you know, place new trails. So thank you so very much, man, our DP. I cannot thank you enough, man. And of course, I'm, I'm not sure we still have the guest speaker on the call, Engineer Nobanjo. Uh, thank you. He, has, he must have left. Uh, great, great thanks I'm, to him. I'm here. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> So thank you so, so very much. So I'm sure it's not the first time we've had you before also uh, on uh, the webinar series. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So thank you for being there always and thank you for doing great justice uh, to the session today. And we continue to trust that we have a collaborator in you in actually uh, pushing the frontiers of engineering development back home in Nigeria. And thanks for continuing to do us proud as a nation over there as well. Thank you so very much. Great, great thanks. That is coming on behalf of the executive committee and all members of the branch. We really appreciate you. And uh, Engineer Nimot Mwili, thank you so much, man. 
you, you need not thank me because I've got myself to actually improve. It's a, it's a honor, really. Thank you very much, too, as well. And well done, well done to the organizing committee and all our elders who have yeah. been here to motivate we young engineers. I mean, we young engineers. <laughs> yes, we young engineers. We, we all remain young at different levels. <laughs> We remain young at different levels. Yes, wow. <laughs> you, you recall that in 2010 or so, when I was chairman and the uh, engineer Ajibala was president and, uh, and they wanted to have this different, I called you. I assumed that you were less than 25. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, I'm still less than 25, ma. Oh, I think you I'm are forever young. 21. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She is ever young. You see those, yeah. those, those girls she is are ever young. That that be following me up After and all, down. how old am I? And she's my grandbaby girl. Uh, exactly. I've been. So I can see appreciation also, to see appreciation to all the coordinators from other branches. And of course, the national, national uh, representative through the Future Leaders Committee. Thanks, big, big thanks. I saw my guy on the call, Engineer Osaze. And of course, to every member of EFO. Thank you, sir. Branch. Yes, thank you, know, so good, good to have you around. Me too. Thanks I'm happy to be always, here. Do I, thanks for always I being a partner. Be. Thank you very much, too, for having me. All right. So, warm regards to everybody in Zaria. Thank you. Uh, we here. Thank uh, you. My, thank you so much, my leader, sir. We appreciate you. This is yeah, actually most, a, a brainchild of your initiative. I remember when you gave us the mandate to celebrate SDGs and uh, yeah. international days that are in line with engineering. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate you for always inspiring us to do more. Peace with all players. Thank, Thank you so much, all sir. That you... It's almost so I like the NSC. Okay. Okay. It's almost like the NSC we... saw um, saw. Um, Notice that today is the World Youth Skill Day because a mail was sent out today by the Young Engineers Future Leaders Committee about the things we do, Young Engineers innovation, Innovative Competition. The mail was sent out today. And by God's grace, I know the, the Young Engineers of NSC Kedja branch are already gearing, uh, preparing for, for this competition. So I'm, I'll be pleased to tell my coordinator, ma, be, be ready for us, ma. The Young Engineers of Kedja branch are coming. <laughs> competition in our branch i mean no doubt about that in fact if if you will be having three positions maybe the first second third i will not be surprised we will take at least two of the three by God no problem. Yes, <laughs> of the best. Yes. Let's cross our hearts so that they will know that we are the second to none and the branch. Okay. Is. Okay. okay. That's okay. a good one. So we can take the we're, branch. We are going time, to. We are be... going to hold you to that statement. Too. Oh, we are going to hold you to that statement. So and, we can take the branch and yes, just to, 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 for now. everybody That's to see. The truth. <laughs> Of course, but, yes. No, we are not complaining. We are only saying <laughs> we have noted it. I was going okay. to remind no, no, you. No. Uh, that's <laughs> what we should sing our anthem so that they can no. let down once. <laughs> okay. let, let me remind the assistant coordinator of what happened last year during the competition that took place. I was there. I was there. I was one of the assistants. 